All right, no one is in yet. I'm going to sit here and wait for you guys to come on and chime in. We will begin starting in about five minutes for Own Atlanta Now, Home by Your Prep Live. Hey, Christina, how's it going? Can you hear me well? Thanks for chiming in, Christina. Are you there? Awesome, awesome. So we're exactly uh, three minutes out. We're going to get started in about three minutes. Do you hear a squeaking now? We're almost there. We're a minute away from one o'clock. What I'm gonna do, guys, I'm just I'm gonna take a few minutes to wait for some of you guys to um, to chime in, and then I'll get started. I have some valuable tips that I want to cover today. Uh, so I don't want you know I want many many people as many people as possible to be exposed to this valuable valuable information. So I'm gonna hang out for a little bit longer. Again, Christina, thank you for chiming in. I know you're busy studying right now for your big exam. Congratulations for even getting started with the uh, real estate course. Angela Johnson is chiming in. Hi, Angela, how are you today? All right, Angela, where are you tuning in from today? Uh, 
Hello, hello, Heather, how are you? Nice to see you again. Is anyone uh, tuning in from work today? Is anyone sitting at their desk at work right now? Oh, Austin, Texas. Okay, awesome. Pleasure to have you here in Atlanta, Georgia, or Metro Atlanta. No work for you today. Awesome. All right. Okay, guys, the two of you, it is one o'clock right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, all right. Welcome to uh, Own Atlanta Now, um, Home by Your Prep live session. And the whole point of this video, actually, before we get started, I want to go ahead and give a shout out to uh, Eric Jackson. He's not here right now. He's uh, actually one of my new agents coming on in the next few weeks. Um, he's currently taking his real estate exam or real estate pre-license course. Also, Christina, my wife, she's going to be the first two of my agents, one of the first two of my agents. Um, so I'm so excited about that. I'm also excited for... You know, for you guys chiming in today, I know one of you is going to be able to use, at least one of you or a few of you are going to be able to use this information to, uh, to do what I always advocate for is, you know, purchasing your own home rather than renting. All right. Um, is anyone here currently a homeowner? So even, you know, if, even if any of you are homeowners, I also encourage you to, you know, continue watching this video. All right. Um, let me see. Also, I'm Darius Bailey, manager broker, D. Bailey & Associates Realty, and um, we are a veteran-owned and managed firm. Just give you a little background about myself. I am a uh, top producing uh, realtor, million-dollar producer for the last few years. I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I've been selling real estate for the last few years. I've also owned five properties in my short time on this earth. Um, Quite a few, you know, for someone my age. But yes, which gives me the credibility to, to stand before you today and kind of give you some tips. I'm also, as me being a managing broker, also manage other agents. Um, so I know what I'm talking about today. So, you know, I'll, hopefully you guys will have some valuable information by the time we end this video today. All right. For the last few years, I've partnered up with five star mortgage brokers such as Wells Fargo to name a few, North Point Bank, uh, Liberty Bank, uh, USAA, and a number of others. All right, uh, so the information that I'm gonna be giving you guys today is coming directly, for lack of better words, from the horse's mouth. All right, um, I am, th thanks Jody. Jody just chimed in one of my uh, Linda partners here. Awesome. What's up, Jody? How you doing today, man? I know you're super busy. Thanks for taking the time to, uh, Go ahead and join us here. All right, and uh, again, Jody, Jody may be adding some, you know, a few comments, so if you guys wanna communicate with him directly or if you know someone who may be um, interested in per purchasing a home, he's you know, one, of the, one of the biggest resources that I utilize in, as a broker. All right, so let's go ahead and get started, guys. So you make the decision to purchase a home or you're planning to purchase a home. You're planning to purchase a home. All right, what I always advocate, I have a lot of people coming to me, uh, say, I want to purchase a home. I need somewhere to stay next month, which is, you know, it's doable, all right, depending on the scenario. However, the decision to purchase a home requires just that, the decision, all right, meaning you made up your mind, all right. After you've made up your mind to do that, it requires some strategic planning because the average person, to be honest with you, the average person is not ready to go. If I were to pick out 10 people randomly, okay, let's purchase a home. Let's go. Large percentage of those people, at least eight of those people would not be ready to go as far as uh, credit, income, um, tax preparation, everything. But all right, my point is when you make the decision to purchase a home, give yourself at least, if not a year, at least six months to go ahead and get all of your ducks in a row, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and get started with those things. 
let's start with income okay because you're making you're making a major purchase I'm gonna assume that you know you have to have income if you're not buying cash you need some type of employment I know my lenders Jody you can chime in at any time requires at least two years of income w2 all right uh, you need at least two years of employment history and ideally you need about 40 hours okay if you're self-employed you're self-employed um, you want to show at least a two-year history of self-employment income all right um, I have myself I'm a 1099 I'm self-employed I'm a business owner some of you may have hustles trades something that you know supplement your income or maybe your primary occupation you want to have at least two years of employment history all right I have some notes here from my lender and the way they calculate that if you're self-employed is they take the last two years of your adjusted gross income and divide that by 24 and what that does is give them an average of those two years of what your income is for those last two years all right this is your self-employed all right I know from experience some of us may have decided okay they want to save some money in their uh, their self-employment income they want to save some money when it's time to file taxes by deducting every allowable ex allowable expense I know it's good in the short term you want to maximize your bring home income and you want to uh, you know I totally get it I totally get it however this is why planning is planning planning is so important when you, if you're self-employed and you know that you're going to be purchasing a home okay you never want to deduct all of those expenses unless you're making so much income that you can afford you can afford to uh, deduct all of those expenses so what I'm saying basically let's say if you make forty five thousand dollars from your self-employment income all right, you're making forty-five thousand dollars, and you're deducting twenty thousand. What you're doing is leaving yourself about twenty thousand dollars, roughly, of adjusted gross, gross adjusted income. And what that is going to mean for you is, when it's time to go to that lender, when it's time to go to that lender, you're going to be showing twenty thousand dollars. And what that is going to do is limit your purchasing power. So basically, you have twenty thousand dollars your income which won't do too much in the metro Atlanta market and before I move in, moving moving further guys I want to make the uh, disclosure I'm a licensed real estate broker okay this is not legal advice this is not specific advice for you okay if you want specific advice please call me at 770-573-3200 all right I can put you in contact with the five-star lender who can look at your specific scenario and give you specific information nor this legal advice all right so for specific information you want to reach out directly to my office number 770-573-3200 all right so the first step two years of employment history preferably full time okay if um, if I'm correct Jody you may want to chime in if you are not working full time it's going to be the it's going to boil down to how much money you're bringing home even if you're not full time so I don't want to you know he can chime in a little bit more and give you that information so I want to automatically disqualify disqualify you because you're a part-timer if you have sufficient amount of income um, and you're working part-time then you sh you know I'm gonna you should be good all right the big mystery here the next point credit scores I know it's a mystery how these credit bureaus calculate your your credit score all right a lot of us chime in a lot of us subscribe to credit karma um, credit sesame you have uh, credit wise you may have an app from your from your um, your credit card company they give you a score all right you may look at your score and say well I have a uh, I have a 600 credit score Keep in mind, these, they're all going to be different, okay, which is normal. Um, we all, they all calculate things different. However, if you're, in a market, if you're in a market to purchase a home, what you want to be focused on is your FICO score, okay? FICO score. 
well, some call it a uh, your middle score. Your FICO score is what you want to focus on only. All right. You can use the credit karmas, the credit wise, the credit sesames to monitor your credit report, which I always tell my clients. Uh, use that just a means to monitor your credit report. Okay, a lot of times they, you know, they are pretty, they are pretty accurate. Uh, they're not flawless, but they can be pretty accurate. You use that to monitor your credit report and know exactly what is on your credit report. But when it comes to qualifying for a home loan, lenders are more concerned with your FICO score. All right, and you may ask, what FICO score do I need to purchase a home? All right, you want to be at a minimum 580, okay? You want to be at a minimum of 580. And I'm gonna read a specific, directly, a specific statement from the mouth of one of my preferred lenders. All right, if FHA, which is a type of loan product, 580 or higher, okay, um, 580 or higher is your goal. Under 580, we need a 10% down payment, okay? So right there, I'm going to stop right there. 10% down payment, and that's 10% of whatever your home purchase price is, okay? So you may ask yourself, uh, you may say, I don't have 10%. I don't have, for example, if you're purchasing at 100000 you need about ten grand. And mind you, that's at 580. So naturally, you want to maximize your savings when you're doing anything. So even with purchasing a house. So what, with that being said, you want to be higher, okay? The lenders, they can make it work with the 580 with other factors considered, but you want to be higher. So 580 or higher is better, all right? With the VA loan, they can go down to about 500 as long as there are no lates in the last year. Late payments, okay? Let me specify late payments, credit cards, car notes, furniture, Okay, anything that you're having financed on your credit, all right? That's what we're factoring in. I've had people ask, well, I have a medical bill. I have a, a, um, a charge off credit card that is late. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jody. These are not factored into those late papers, okay? So you want on-time credit history. If you lower your credit score, the more weight the late payment is going to have on your credit score. OK, um, when, when it comes to purchasing a home. All right. Conventional. You have conventional loans. Conventional loans are for mainly for individuals. OK, thanks for the clarity, Jody. No late in the last 12 months on housing or car loan or any installment loans. OK, correct. Confirming what I just stated to you guys. All right. What I just mentioned is FA, FHA credit score. We get into conventional loans. All right, we get into conventional loans. Conventional loans typically are for uh, individuals with higher credit scores, 700, 700 and up. Okay. Conventional loans, normally 700 and higher. Okay, seldom do conventional loans allow for under 700 credit score unless they have a strong co borrower or they have a good solid history. Okay, a, a, a low score with a good long history of payments will compensate for lower score. Okay. All right. So let's say, for example, you don't have a strong credit score. Okay. You're in need of a home. You want to purchase. You have a family member who's interested in helping you out. Okay. Mom, dad, sister, brother. It happens. I see it all the time. Spouse. We have a spouse who may have a stronger credit. Uh, we have the other spouse who may have more of the income. Okay. So Basically, the law of averages, okay? Um, if one of you guys have the strongest score, you guys come together, and assuming that one of the greatest score or the lower score is not pulling the, the more qualified buyer all the way down below the, um, the minimum allowed criteria, then that ind second individual or co-borrower will benefit your situation, all right? All right. So let's back up a little bit, go over to late payments, all right? This is directly from one of my lenders. They don't care about late payments unless their score is under 620, all right? Under 620, all right? So if you have a late payment, and let's say you're above 620, you're 640, 650, that late payment within a 12-month period won't disqualify you or hurt you as much, okay? 
So we want to aim for, to answer your question, we want to aim for a 580, but when you get into 620, 640, that gives you more options, okay, more benefits, all right? Um, Jody just chimed in. No more, more than 230 day late payments on a mortgage or installment debt in the last 24 months. No major derogatories on credit cards in 12 months. This means no 90, 90 day late or more than three in a 60 day late period, 60 day period, or no, three 60 day lates. All right, you guys can check out the comments from directly from Jody Hayward. All right, he's one of my uh, five star lender resources. All right, large debts. Okay, you're purchasing a home. All right, it's always positive. Okay, it's always positive to have installment accounts okay let's say you're you're rebuilding yourself or you're a new credit you're coming to purchase a home all right you want to show that mortgage company you want to show that mortgage company that you handled debt well in the past okay which is your credit report it's showing them that, that you know you're you're you've mastered the art of paying back your debts all right so with that being said, a lot of people don't know that you, you you need credit, you need debt in order to ask for, you know, to, to get pre-approved for a mortgage. You want a credit card at least, all right? It's all, ideally you want to have various types of credit, installment account, credit cards, real estate. But again, you're, you're looking to purchase a house, all right? So you can't have that right now. So what you want to do is start building those other legs, credit cards, installment accounts with those accounts you always want to make sure that you're you know you have a positive on time history okay paying on time all right um, keeping those accounts at least 20 percent at about 20 percent of the credit limit for example if you have a 300 dollars balance you want to be if I'm correct I don't have a calculator with me but you want to be around 65 75 dollars or about 50 dollars okay what that does is shows those those lenders or the, the mortgage lender that you're not relying you're not relying solely on that account to live. All right, going above that basically states that you can't afford those cards, that you're experiencing hardship, and that you you're going to be a greater risk. All right, and you may you know may hurt your your you know hurt your ability to get a mortgage loan. So basically, you want to stay at twenty. 20 ideally, but never go above 30% of your available balance with your credit cards. All right. You're going, let's say, for example, you're coming out of bankruptcy. All right. You're coming out of bankruptcy and you have about um, a 565, 555, no credit cards. I've seen it happen over the last few years. Getting a secure credit card, maintaining an on time history on that secure credit card for three to four months, you will experience a, an immediate bit of rapid jump or increasing your credit score, all right? So that's the quickest way to improve your credit. With no credit is a secured credit card, all right? You may ask why not a secure, unsecured card, all right? Unsecured, they're gonna, you're gonna be, they're strategically harder or more difficult to get with lower credit scores, 580s, 590s, um, Five, five, you know, less than 600. So it's always wise, rather than taking a risk of applying for an unsecured credit card, it's always wise to maximize your 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 possibilities. Okay, go with the secured first. All right, don't risk the getting don't risk getting the getting the credit denial. Okay, when there's a strong possibility that you won't be approved, don't risk getting the denial. Go for the unsecured account. If you're 500 below 600, take your chance. Get this secured card. Put a small deposit down and get a small account. Okay? Because you again, you're starting fresh. You want to start with low accounts. Okay? Even you know you want to don't trust yourself with that yet. Get the security card. Pay your payments on time and keep the balances low. All right. Use that card for gas only. Okay. Um, there's a what I tell my clients, if there is a hobby or something that you normally pay cash for, 
Take that card, replace that expense that you would normally pay cash for, replace that, all right, and take that same cash and send it off to the credit card companies right away. Discipline yourself to do that for the next three months and guarantee you guys, everything else being equal, your credit score will increase in a short period of time. All right, so I'm gonna read this note again and directly from one of my lenders. Car loan or student loans are the main ones. You want, it, there's a thing called debt to income ratio, which basically divides your monthly household or credit expenses by your monthly gross income. That number gives, you want that number to be 31% on the front end, back end 43%. I'm not gonna get into that, I don't wanna confuse you and get into that right now. But my point is what I'm trying to go at, get to is keep your expenses low, all right? If you have student loans, all right, one thing that can hurt you, let's say, for example, you have student loans, $100,000, and you make about $30,000, $40,000 a year. That will hurt your debt-to-income ratio, okay? You want to keep your monthly expenses as a small portion of your gross income. So monthly expenses divided by your monthly gross income, you want that result to be less than about 28 to 31%, okay? So again, your monthly expenses, when I say ex expenses, I mean on your credit, not your utility, not your light bill, not your water, those items that are on your credit for student loans, car notes, furniture, credit card, all right? So keep those numbers, that ratio low monthly credit expenses divided by your monthly gross income. That number should be 31% or less. All right, so I have another note from Jody Hayworth. They don't, we don't care about credit limit, just the credit history and balance percentage compared to the available credit. All right, I would love to get you guys on the phone with this guy, he's amazing, all right? Before we move any further, I want to encourage you guys to connect with me if you know this is something that you're truly passionate about or interested in doing the next uh, next six months, year or so, let's make contact. Give my office a call, 770-573-3200. Or if you're not there yet, you just want to search, visit my website, ownatlantanow.com. Create a profile. Let's stay in contact. That What that will do is give me an idea of what you're looking for, what your, your specific taste is. All right. Of course, that won't get us to the point where we can start shopping for you, but that making contact is you know is is good it's definitely a positive we want to make contact all right ideally three secured cards are great to have when you're you know preparing yourself to purchase a home three secured cards are great however i've seen one secured credit card get clients in the home all right rebuilding credit i've seen one secure one responsible card um get clients into a home, all right? It only takes one, but ideally three are great, all right? That will, you know, kind of boost your boost your probabilities of, you know, getting your credit score where it needs to be, or getting it increased more swiftly, all right? Um, and again, guys, I wanted, ideally I wanted to just talk, touch on the items that are, you know, the minimum criteria such as two years income, uh, credit score, and you know debt preparation however since i have you guys here i want to kind of touch on the importance of making contact with us you know up here's us here at debailing associates realty you go to a doctor for health counsel you go to an attorney for health counsel it only makes sense reach out to a professional reach out to us here at debailing associates realty let us guide you let one of our agents guide you to home ownership, okay? We are in the trenches every day helping individuals purchase properties, uh, help sell or sell properties. Come to us before you make any moves, all right? Bring us your interest, bring us your, your decision. With your decision to purchase a home, we can do a lot with that, all right? Come to us, let us know what your goals are, and we can help guide you through those steps all the way to the closing table, all right? 
So come to us first. We'll sit down, go over what you're looking to get from home ownership. Um, if you're a renter right now, we can help assist you with making the transition from renter to, to homeowner. Okay, if you're in the metro Atlanta area, okay, just know Atlanta is expected to increase in population by about 1.6 million. With that increase, you're going to be looking at a huge surge in rental rates. Okay, what I like to I tell my clients, you want to liken it to, you want to liken renting versus homeownership or renting versus mortgage to that of wholesale and retail. Okay, Atlanta is on lots of individuals radar for you know investment properties you have a lot of nationals from canada japan china all over the world pinpoint atlanta as a hub for purchasing all right uh, what that means for you if you're renting your rents will continue to, to climb all right as investors as a, as investors their whole goal is to to maximize to maximize their um, their returns. All right, what that means for you as a as a renter or a tenant, your rent must climb. Okay, there's a thing called inflation. Inflation is about three percent every year. Okay, in order for those individuals to continue to profit, they need to raise those rental rates. I'm sure a lot of you uh, who are renting right now have um, noticed, you know, from year to year an increase in rent. That's because those investors, those landlords. Uh, those absentee landlords or wherever they may be are strategizing to get more value out of the dollar from year to year. All right. So what that means for you is that your rents will continue to rise unless you make that decision to, to purchase. All right. All things being equal, the house that you're living in paying twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 per year are likely 20 to 30 uh, percent less for that for that landlords mortgage pay. So it's only wise guys to uh, you know if you're going to be here in Atlanta five to six years or you know or more you want to maximize your dollar by purchasing a home. Okay. Um that's about it guys is by purchasing a home is very simple. It doesn't take much other than the decision to purchase, okay? Um responsible responsible uh, financial handling for a good six, 12 months, all right? I tell people it's always easier to build credit than to rebuild credit, okay? So if you're in a position where you don't have any credit, you are basically on a blank slate and it, it doesn't take much at all for you. I would love to be able to assist you with, uh, with the help of my, uh, my resources, my, my five-star lender partners, we could get you where you need to be in no no time at all. Just reach out to us and you know we'd love to devote our time to helping you get where you need to be. All right, guys. Um, that's about all, all I have right now. For more information again, make connect, make contact with me. I'd love to work with you. Um, again, I'm Darius Bailey, managing broker of D Bailey and Associates Realty, the standout brand in Metro Atlanta real estate. Uh, if you know someone who's looking to uh, to make a career shift. Um, love helping individuals obtain home ownership. Um, have them reach out to us as well. We're looking for talented, uh, disciplined, motivated agents to join our firm and help individuals like you. Uh, guys, I really appreciate you watching this video and I look forward to more coming in the future. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm always here to help. You guys have a wonderful day.